Okay, so for the past few weeks, MMR has steadily increased in 3v3, which means now is the perfect time to climb. And if you want your best chance at gaining rating, you're going to have to play a comp that can handle the meta. Now, we consulted with some of the highest rated players on the ladder today to figure out what comps give you the best chance to climb in Season 3. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcapped is backed up by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First up is the S tier. These are the compositions that are ruling the ladder at the higher ranks and are probably going to be what most of the pros are playing with when it comes to the Arena World Championships later this month. The first composition can be played with either a Demon Hunter, Arms Warrior, or an Outlaw Rogue, as long as they have an Elemental Shaman and Restoration Druid to back them up. This comp archetype is as old as time itself, and it works great this season due to just how much healing Restoration Druids are able to provide, allowing games to go on well into high dampening. All three of these compositions are of the classic Do Damage Don't Die variety, with each member of the team being a brick wall to kill as well as having crazy high burst windows that can destroy you in an instant with random ascendance procs and primordial waves. The biggest difference between these three compositions is their tempo. When you play with an arms warrior, your gameplay is always going to be based on attrition, meaning mana and defense are going to be key. So you shouldn't overchase and just try and do as much damage as possible to anything that's in your line of sight. Whereas the Outlaw and the Demon Hunter variants, they require slightly more coordination between the Elemental and the Melee, where they need to be scoring kills with short, instant crowd control chains while combining their bursts together to one-shot their opponents. Okay, so moving on, our next S-tier composition is an Unholy Death Knight and Windwalker Monk, combined with a Resto Shaman, Resto Druid, or Preservation Evoker as the healer. Someone call up Rick Grimes because the infamous Walking Dead has made a return, being one of the few comps in the meta that can actually score kills early on in the game. By using Death Grip, followed by a Blinding Sleet and Leg Sweep, Walking Dead can kill your entire team at once before you even realize what the heck is happening, as both Unholy and Windwalkers are currently doing some absurd bursts. As for the healers for this comp, Restoration Shamans are absolutely fantastic, as their utility allows them to aid in the kill with Static Field trapping the other team in the Blender of Death, Grounding, and Shear allowing their team to avoid CC on the setup, and Purge being so volatile at shutting down healing in the current Restoration Druid meta. Unsurprisingly, this also goes for Preservation Evokers, as their high damage and Fire Breath Purge can cause druid teams to just be absolutely annihilated. Not to mention their sleepwalk CC is perfect to set up from as it leads the afflicted target into a poor position. Okay, so of course it's also going to be viable with restoration druids, as not only is their healing high, but so is their offensive potential with cyclones and even damage from wraths and star surges. The Walking Dead isn't the only S-tier Unholy Death Knight composition, though, as they can also play with a Demon Hunter and Holy Paladin, Resto Shaman, or Druid to form Hero Cleave. This cop has always been a nightmare for Restoration Druid metas, as its damage is always so volatile that whoever the Death Knight grips in can easily die making pre-hotting the correct target pretty difficult. Hero Cleave is also quite tanky, as it can shut down setups with ease because of how disruptive it is, along with having reverse magic for any CC that slips through the cracks. So when it comes to healers, Holy Paladin is seeing the most success with this composition, largely because of its instant CC chain of Hammer of Justice and Blinding Light, allowing them to assist in the kills. And with a 90 second trinket change, the previous counter of rogues have a much smaller window to execute their kill before the Paladin can trinket and trade Blessing of Protections and Sacrifices again. Our final S-tier comp, as always, is a variant of Rogue Mage. It wouldn't be a tier list without it. Let's be serious now. And this time around, it's unsurprisingly RMD that's taken the S-tier spot, most commonly being played with Arcane Mages in either Outlaw or Subtlety Rogues. RMD is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all of the S-tier comps previously mentioned with huge burst windows, long CC chains, and great defense if it's played well. 
This comp can also go the distance mana-wise, as it's so many diminishing returns that they can easily set up drinks for the Druid and keep the game going. The current biggest downfall, though, of Rogue Mage Druid is, ironically, the Druid meta, though, as scoring those sheeps on Druids can be pretty difficult when they're in tree form for 50% of the game. It's also important to keep in mind, with the recent health buffs and eviscerate nerfs, Outlaw has surpassed subtlety in nearly every aspect. This is due to games lasting longer and having less volatility, causing subtlety rogues one-shot windows to no longer be as effective. Meanwhile, Outlaw's consistent damage profile and intake tankiness has actually benefited from the patch, as they're far less resilient on 100 owing targets to secure a win. Okay, so dropping down to the a tier now, we have comps that uh, are going to be still strong. They are going to generally lose to comps in the S tier, though, due to their lacking defense. Our first a composition is one for all of you enhancement shamans out there, as by pairing yourself with an arms warrior, you can steamroll your way up the ladder. Arms and Enhance, most commonly known as Turbo Cleave, has been falling behind in more recent times, often due to the fragility of enhancement shamans, as well as their damage breakdown regularly being tied to very gimmicky one-shot builds. Now, all that's changed, though, as through the main stat nerf, shorter trinket cooldown on healers, and the various warrior talent changes like the new safeguard talent, enhancement shamans can find themselves living for quite some time in most matchups. This, with their damage becoming far more consistent, allows the mortal strike effect from arms warriors to really put in work when tunneling down targets. Okay, so healer-wise, Holy Paladin and Fist Weaver, they're both excellent choices, as both bring high healing emergency defensive cooldowns, and a short but powerful CC chain to help score kills. So next up in the A-plus tier, we have the best Boomkin composition, Boomy, Demon Hunter, and either a Restoration Druid, Resto Shaman, or Preservation Evoker accompanying them. This composition lives and dies by its setups, though, with a huge emphasis on landing Cyclone out of the Demon Hunter's stuns and incapacitates, which allows for huge kill windows with Star Surges and all those Demon Hunter cooldowns. Now, for healers, you want to play with something that can support the Boomkin to stand in the fight and spam cast Cyclones, making cooldowns like a Restoration Shaman's Earthen Wall fantastic for soaking up damage, as well as Preservation's drawback of being a 25-yard range healer not being quite so bad, as the Boomkin is not looking to kite to survive. Shamans and Preservations are also perfect for this composition, as they can assist offensively, making up for the Boomkin's long cooldown on kick with their own, as well as adding crowd control and potential damage to the ghosts. Unfortunately for Boomkin DH, it doesn't quite make it to the S tier though due to the meta, as with so many Restoration Druids sitting 40 yards away, it can be difficult to land Cyclones on them and get any value from their Solar Beam. And to make matters worse, the highly disruptive classes of Unholy Death Knights and Rogues are very prominent, making casting Cyclone a nightmare in many games. So moving on, if you're looking for an a tier comp for Destruction Warlocks, look no further than a Rogue Partner, regardless of what spec they choose, as well as a Holy Paladin or Restoration Druid to heal you from the sidelines. Destro is dishing out huge damage with Instance this season, making it perfect for pairing with a melee as you don't have to bait out kicks to deal effective pressure. When playing with an Assassination Rogue, you can easily AoE the entire enemy team down with Immolates and their strong Mortal Strike and Bleeds with minimal crowd control. Whereas if you play with an Outlaw or a Sub, the games are going to be more controlled with Gouge and Fear CC chains and deadly healer swaps. The biggest downfall of this composition is how much physical damage the lock can take if they're not careful, and the high number of melee cleaves running rampant on the ladder can prove to be quite troublesome. Destruction Warlocks can also find success playing with a Demon Hunter while being healed by a Resto Shaman, Resto Druid, or Holy Paladin. This composition is very aggressive, and it causes the Warlocks to have yet another modifier on its damage from the Demon Hunter's Throw Glaive debuff. Short CC chains are the name of the game with this composition, fearing off incapacitates and stuns from the DH while gunning down the kill target with instant spam and immolates. The final a tier comp in our list is Affliction, Assassination, and Holy Paladin. And it's the first time this expansion where Afflit has had a comp that's been above B tier, 
With both DPS boasting huge rot pressure, Affliction is able to dot the healer in the Assassination Rogue stuns and Garrotts, making triple dotting far easier than in any other comp. And if that's not enough, the Assassination can always come in with a huge King's Bane to finish the job as it's consistently critting for close to 200,000 hits. Holy Paladin is fantastic in this comp, thanks to Consecration or Reducing Kicks, allowing the One School Affliction Warlock to cast more frequently, while also having access to interrupt immunities like Blessing of Protection and Aura Mastery to allow the Warlock free reign of the arena and even heal themselves to full with their uninterruptible drain life channels in clutch situations. Next up is the A tier, where we have the new comp of Fist Weaver, Devastation, and Feral leading the charge. With the recent buffs to Devastation, it's now able to deal ridiculous damage with its Disintegrate cast, making them a must kick for any team. Unfortunately for the other team though, you've also got to kick those Cyclones or you give the Feral a free frenzy, as well as a member of their team being taken out of the game for 6 seconds. All while the Fist Weaver is delivering huge healing and damage, while being difficult to CC as they're stacking on top of their team, causing crowd controls like traps, fears, and polymorphs to often break. This comp is tough and has some of the highest damage in the game, although it only makes the A tier due to how vulnerable each member is because of their weak defensives and damage mitigation. Another class that's reaping the rewards of the new patch are Shadow Priest, allowing them to finally have access to an A-tier composition through playing with a Warlock of any spec while being healed by a Holy Paladin, Restoration Druid, or Restoration Shaman. This combo, often known as Shadow Play, has different strengths depending on the Warlock's specialization. When playing with Affliction, the comp is all about rot pressure on all three targets, forcing the other team to fall behind on healing and then be finished off by some well-placed stuns and silences. Now alternatively, if you choose to play with a Destruction Warlock, it's suddenly a very one-shot heavy composition that's more single target oriented, often 100 owing targets out of thin air. Or if you feel like a mix of both, you can opt for Demonology, who will let you win on mana through its mortal strike effects, while also having a decent burst window with Tyrant. Shadow Priest can also opt to play with an Outlaw Rogue and a Resto Shaman or Holy Paladin, which we're sure the move are very happy about. This composition allows the shadow free reign of the arena with cast, thanks to the rogue's lockdown, and can allow for some ridiculously long CC chains for both peeling and securing wins, as it has access to literally every diminishing return in the game. Okay, so moving on, we have two more caster cleaves, both revolving around demonology warlocks, these being Elemental Shaman, Druid, and Frost Mage Druid. Due to the nature of Demonology's damage profile, both of these comps are played the same way, with crowd control taking a backseat to spamming damage since every polymorph and hex under the sun is going to break the various demo abilities and pets. These two compositions are all about attrition and winning on mana, scoring kills with the mortal strike from Felguard in the late game. But because of this, it can't rise above A tier, as it can often have huge issues finishing targets especially after the recent stamina changes. Another very slow comp in the meta is the melee cleave of Rhett, Warrior, Resto Shaman, or Resto Druid, which aims to outlast their opponents through its utility. With tools like Blessing of Sanctuary and Blessing of Protection, Rhett's allow their healer to frequently break out of CC chains, minimizing some of the risks that they might face. Now, unlike Turbo though, Rhett Warrior is not able to deal overwhelming damage, meaning it can't brute force its way through cooldowns quite as often. And lacking a purge and range damage in a Resto Druid meta makes it really difficult to swap targets or to kill through healing. Therefore, we're placing in the A tier due to how hard it can be to bring the game to a close. Next up, we have a composition that is a complete 180 to the slow pace of the Caster Cleaves and Rhett Warrior with the best comp for Hunters and Priests alike. Hunter, Unholy DK, Priest. This comp is all about the gas pedal, dealing overwhelming pressure with ridiculous damage while the Priest smashes that offensive dispel button like there is no tomorrow. The comp also has fairly long crowd control chains with stuns, traps, fears, and silences, which can cause any healer to fall behind regardless of their class. Now, to play this comp, you can take a Hunter of any specialization as they all deal strong, consistent damage, have good burst damage, 
and have that all-important mortal strike to aid the Death Knight in scoring kills. Your pre-spec can also either be disc or holy as the extra damage from disc is pretty beneficial. However, the extra CC from holy works just as well. The biggest downfall of PHDK is its durability as it lacks any sort of hard peels outside of snares, as well as having no off healing for when the healer is in crowd control. Our final A tier composition is Boomkin Subtlety with either a Preservation Evoker, Resto Shaman, or Resto Druid. Now, although this composition is powerful in the right hands, it can be difficult to execute. Sporting very long setups and every diminishing return in the game, this comp lives and dies through the synergy between all three players, which doesn't make it ideal for pickup games. But if you're willing to invest the time, the huge damage windows that Boomkin and Subrogues provide allows them to quickly kill any target in the game, making it ideal for a Resto Druid meta, as they can swap on whichever target is not covered by HOTS. Okay, so now let's take a look at the B tier, where we have comps with classes that are struggling in the current meta, but if they're played well, they can reach Gladiator. First up, we have Augmentation, Feral, Fistweaver. This comp is basically the same as last season, however, Augs are just dealing significantly less damage. Revolving around buffing their teammates and trying to take out targets with upheaval and eruption, this comp is basically the same as the Devastation iteration for the people too stubborn to swap specs. The only upside is that it can cover the squishy aspect of the Feral by increasing its armor with blistering scales, as well as saving them with rescue and off healing when they're stunned. This comp works best when you focus on connecting everything at once, like timing that 300,000 empowered ferocious bite with an upheaval cast and a blackout kick from your fist weaver. But honestly, this is so unreliable and it just requires fantastic coordination. Our next B tier comp is with a mage of any spec accompanied by a holy priest and subtlety rogue. And uh, yeah, you heard it right. RMP is struggling hard this season. Now, this is mainly due to the Resto Druid meta, which causes all the games to drag on to the depths of dampening, and when this happens, priests fall off tremendously. This factor, along with the main stat nerf, is causing Rogue Mage to not finish off targets before their crowd control ends, resulting in a lot of failed setups which is a problem that's exasperated with the 90 second trinket change that makes any failed go just that much more punishing. However, it's not all bad for Rogue Mage as they're still very powerful under the other meta healer of Holy Paladins and are able to kill the meta DPS of Elemental Shamans and Demon Hunters pretty easily in stuns. Finally, our last B tier comp is Subtlety Hunter Priest, otherwise known as Thug Cleave. Like Rogue Mage, this composition is struggling due to how tanky all the meta comps are, causing its short kill windows to not yield any results. The classes are also all really squishy, making it a glass cannon composition that can quickly be overwhelmed if things don't go to plan. Now, although we might see this comp in the AWC again from Big Mechs, so maybe they can prove us wrong. Lastly, we have the C tier with the two worst PvP specs in the game, Fury Warrior and Frost Death Knight. Fury Warriors can find a modicum of success by playing with an Arcane Mage and Restoration Druid this season, as their strong consistent damage paired with potent crowd control can allow the Fury Warrior to deal damage on their target uninterrupted, while also assisting with the kill with the Slaughterhouse Mortal Strike effect. Sadly though, Fury's damage is often just not enough to find the kill unless it's in dampening or there's a ton of CC therefore making their teammates have to put the warrior on their back and carry them to victory. Fury also doesn't really bring any of the defensive utility that ARMS does, meaning they're going to have to damage bot their way to the top. Finally, as always, our last comp of the tier list is Frost Death Knight, Devastation, Mistweaver, aka the ultimate noob killer. With powerful setups that can be seen from literally a mile away, this comp can definitely pack a punch, but when facing anyone with the skill capped weak or a pack, it's going to be a ridiculously uphill battle. The goes are telegraphed, the Frost Death Knight is squishy, and the Devastation has no one to soak kicks for them. Executing this comp at higher ratings can be incredibly punishing. But if you are really insistent on sticking to your Frost Death Knight roots, this is probably the best shot you're going to have at Gladiator. 
All right, guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about SkillCat. So we offer a 400 rating gain guarantee, and we think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's kind of like a gym membership guaranteeing you that you're going to get ripped. Your local gym, it'd go bust if they offered that, right? Well, not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet, with over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups and if that wasn't enough, SkillCat members can also join the premium section of our Discord where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you're serious about improving and you want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. All right, that's all for this video. Good luck with your gladiator pushes, and we'll see you in the next one.